All right, guys, so I have another repair video that I was gonna do, and uh, it's this uh, HP E3612A DC power supply. Um, so it has a max voltage of 120 volts at 0.25 amps, um, and it can also do 60 volts at uh, up to 0.5 amps. So now I had actually already recorded a video on this thing when it was when I first got it, I got it off eBay. Uh, it was listed for parts or not working. Um, and it had a unique um, <clears throat> symptom. So the listing said it, regardless of what you set the uh, current control to, um, it would it would only limit to 60 milliamps. Um, so that, you know, you could set it to 0.5 amps and it would put a load on it it would only uh, limit to 60 milliamps so I thought that was interesting um, and uh, yeah so I, I did this video when it was broke and unfortunately that video got deleted I deleted it by accident so I'm kind of going back after I fixed it to kind of explain to you guys what the symptoms were and then I'll you know I'll follow this segment up with another segment kind of walking you through how I troubleshooted the issue um, and what I did to repair it but yeah so that, that that's what it was um, you know I, I confirmed that it was only uh, it was only able to limit the current to 60 milliamps and you know the way I did that was is I grabbed a, um, a resistor um, and uh, yeah so I figured I in the initial video I did, I, I was going to just talk to you guys a little bit about Ohm's Law. So, Ohm's Law is um, uh, current times resistance equals voltage. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to test this power supply when I first got it. And so I grabbed a 56 ohm resistor and I wanted to apply, apply 10 volts across it. Now, using Ohm's Law, that um, you know, putting um, uh, t 10 volts across a uh, 56 ohm resistor, you should get 0.18 amps. And um, you know, obviously, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that the resistor that you use can handle that that amount of power. So you also need to know the power equation, which is volts times current. Um, so I grabbed a 5 watt resistor because the amount of the power output for the, um, that, that that resistor would be dissipating would be 1.8 watts. So I grabbed a 5 watt resistor to make sure that it wasn't going to burn up uh, to a crisp. If it was like a lower, I've had a lower power rating. And yeah, so I um, hooked it up to this this power supply when it wasn't working and sure enough it would only limit the current to 60 milliamps and I think it was only able to pull about I think it was only able um, the power supply was only able to put 3.5 volts or something across that resistor due to the the um, the amount of current it was able it would, it would only limit it to and I'm sure if you you did um, uh, 56 times 60, 56 ohms times, um, 60 milliamps, you would get 3.5 volts. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's how I, you know, I verified that the, the power supply had this issue. Another thing that it was doing as well was the, um, when you press the current control button, it would only show a max of, I think it was like 280 milliamps, and uh, that was regardless of what range it was set to, so that was also another interesting issue that was going wrong with it. So, um, yeah, so I had the, these two problems to deal with. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of kind of what I'm gonna walk you guys through in the next segment. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys find it interesting. 
All right, so we've got this E36 12A power supply opened up. And, um, you know, I did a, a inspection of this this guy. I did some testing, um, and I'm just going to kind of go through that with you guys. Um, but first glance, you can see the board is really clean. And, I mean, look, there's the, the, the date a date on on for the the age of this thing from 1993 December 1993 so I mean for, it, this thing is wow 30 years old almost and it looks great visually at least um, so yeah I mean of course what I like to do is anytime I'm working on uh, electronics trying to repair them and troubleshoot the issue I do a, I like to do a visual inspection because uh, you can rule out a, a number of things right off the bat by doing a quick visual inspection. I mean, and because and, that's the thing with these things. You, sometimes you have these really complex symptoms and it just happens to be a cold solder joint or, you know, just, just something really stupid. <laughs> um, so, yeah, always do a visual inspection. You can see things are looking really good here and you know I'm not gonna flip the thing over right now but it, it, it's the same on the back too no clean no cold joints nothing nothing like that in really good shape uh, the next thing that I did though is I um, tested the the voltages so thou shall test voltages as Dave at the EEV blog likes to say so I tested the 12 volt 5 volt and negative 12 volt rails and they were all fine um so you know that the, the, i and i was expecting them to be but you know it's always good just to rule things out um and then another thing that i noticed are these these button switches these snap action button switches so these switches are really common um on older electronics and on electronic test equipment and they can be problematic because dirt debris dust can get into those switches um, and they can really wreak havoc and they can really cause some strange uh, symptoms um, for example I, I had this power this uh, Valhalla power analyzer over there um, got that used on eBay and it was just throwing all sorts of strange values, um, not accurate at all, it was just jumping around all over the place, and it just was that it has a, it has a ton of these uh, gang switches, and they just needed to be cleaned with some contact cleaner. So I did that with these, and I even drilled holes in two of them because they didn't really have any openings on the top, um, so I could get some contact cleaner in there. and. Actually, I'm glad I did that because that white switch there, that's the um, for the uh, current limit control. And I showed you guys earlier, this thing can, um, can uh, limit up to 500 milliamps, um, or it limits at 500 milliamps. That's the most you can get out of this power supply. Um, it was only it was going up to a maximum of like 200 or 250 or something like that uh and cleaning that switch up now it's now showing the the, the max current is now accurate so it's over it's a little over 500 milliamps um and that's what it's, what it's supposed to be at so that actually solved that problem but did not solve this other issue where it's only limiting to 60 milliamps regardless of what you set the the current to so that problem must have must lie elsewhere um, and you know so uh, you can see here these these big resistors these are uh, current sensing resistors um, those all are, are testing fine so yeah I was really looking for any of the circuitry that is involved with the current control um, there's also uh, U4 there that's um, the, the current error Op amp. I'm gonna. I also have the schematic pulled up. Of course, anytime I try to show you guys a schematic, my computer goes to sleep, so I gotta open it back up. But yeah. 
So you have the constant current set circuit, and yeah, so U4, that op amp, that dual op amp is involved in that, the current error amplifier um, as well. And so I was looking at that, doing some testing there um, as a potential uh, source of the issue. You know, all these electrolytic caps, they also tested fine. So I was really kind of, um, you know, I was, I was kind of hitting the wall as far as what was going wrong with this thing. And I was about to order uh, a replacement for this op amp, and unfortunately they don't make this LF442CN anymore. I found a suitable alternative, and I was going to order that. But then I decided to take a look at the series pass transistors or MOSFETs over here, um, these big guys. Uh, I hadn't looked at those yet. It was pretty much the only thing I hadn't looked at. And there's also these smaller transistors as well that I, I, I wanted to look at. So I removed the MOSFETs and they tested fine. Um, but these little transistors though, this can over here tested fine. But this guy right here, Q5, that's not the original. Um, so that original had some problems. Um, definitely was not testing correctly. And I have the original over here. That can right there. Um, I think it's, it's a 2N2222, which is a very common transistor. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to test these guys, these, these, uh, these guys. Um, so a transistor has three pins. It's got the base, the collector, and the emitter. And, it, and they are used a lot as uh, fast acting switches. So you can apply a voltage or current to the base of the transistor and it will allow um, current or voltage to pass from, move from the collector to the emitter. So it acts as a switch. Uh, there's a, you can test these with a multimeter that has a diode function. I mean, you can use use the, the ohms function as well, but the diode function works really well. I like to use that. And I'm going to show you guys first that what what a um, what a good transistor should look like. So we're going to I have this other uh, transistor here as well, that black one. Um, and so the way you test these is if it now. There's two different types of transistors. I mean, there's a variety of different types, but the two main kinds are NPN and, and PNP. So we have two NPN transistors here. So when they're NPN transistors, you're, you're going to take your multimeter and take the, the um, positive test lead, and you're going to put it on the base, which for this guy is pin number two. I'm going to try to do this with while holding the camera, so bear with me. I really need a better way to hold this camera while I'm shooting video, but anyway. So yeah. So I've got the positive test lead on the base of this transistor and negative test lead on the collector, pin number three. You can see that the multi re, uh, multimeter is reading about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts DC. And that is what you really want to see when you're testing one of these. Um, if you were to reverse these leads, you should see... Um, you, should, you should probably get OL on the meter, so it, because it's not going to allow... Um, voltage to pass in the opposite direction, kind of like a diode. Uh, so yeah, that's what you want to see when you're 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 testing one of these. Um, and so now we're gonna do the the faulty one, and I'm gonna show you guys the result I was getting.
Okay. See? Now we're reading roughly 0.3 volts. So that's definitely not what you want to see for, for this type of transistor. Um, and if I reverse these leads, I'll also get this value. Um, and then another thing that you can do is to even kind of uh, verify this even further is look at that. So you're getting 360 ohms what, in either direction. And we can compare that to the good transistor over here. And look at that. So, oh, a little over 5 mega ohms. So definitely something wrong with that original transistor there. And so I, I didn't have the exact type in stock, but I think what I ended up replacing it with was a... I think it's in an, an MPS two 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 or it's 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 pretty much a it's a suitable alternative. Um, that's just what I had on hand, and put it in, and this thing started working. And I'm gonna fire it up for you guys now, so you can see. I'm power this guy on. Jeez. Well, I'm gonna try. All right, so now if these numbers look familiar, this is the test that we did earlier. So I've got this guy set to about 10 volts, yep, got our 56 ohm resistor, and we're reading about 180 milliamps and showed you earlier Ohm's law that's what we should see across um, you know the current across this this resistor should be about 0.18 amps if you're gonna apply 10 volts to it so this thing is working great again um, and I'm also going to show you guys so this is what I was talking about, this the current uh, constant current button. So this is what it, this is at the um, max. So you can see it's reading 283 milliamps. Um, this is in the um, uh, 0.25 amp range. So if I put it up to um, the 0.5 amp range, let's just. Yeah, see, so we're reading about uh, almost 600 milliamps. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, th I'm thinking that's probably still normal. Um, but I am going to, there the, in the manual, there is a uh, calibration um, procedure and some test procedures that you can do that I'm, I'm going to do uh, just to get this thing fully operational and, and accurate. But yeah, that is a successful repair right there. Um, and I, I would assume my computer went to sleep again, so I, this video has already been very cumbersome with trying to hold the camera, so I'm not gonna put you guys through that again. But looking at the schematic, so that those transistors, these MOSFETs, are part of the current limiting circuit. Um, and if you look up current limiting circuits for linear power, supp power supplies, they'll usually involve uh, a number of transistors. And I'm not going to go into detail about how those work. Uh, someone smarter than me can do that. But yeah, so they, they, I should have been looking at those a bit earlier um, as far as what could, as, as, as a potential source of, of this, this issue. But we got there eventually. And um, we got another nice piece of test gear for relatively cheap. But, all right, I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time.